So thank you. Uh, my name is uh, Joe Collinet, and I'm going to present this work, which I completed with uh, Katie and Trevor from the Department of Computer Science and uh, Constantine from the Liverpool Law, Law School. So just to give you a bit of an overview, I'm going to start off with an introduction to our work, including some of the motivation about why we've chosen admissibility of cases as the problem to tackle. I'll then discuss how our model was implemented, both as a concept and practically. And then finally, I'll discuss the pilot study where our implemented program was used by a small sample of lawyers who work in the European Court of Human Rights. And then finally, I'll take some questions at the end. So we've developed a model that determines admissibility of cases that are submitted to the European Court of Human Rights. Admissibility in this case is whether the court will look at that case. And then if it's not admissible, then they don't look at it. And once our model has determined whether uh, a case is admissible, it explains how it came to that decision. This is then implemented into a Java program and then given, and then we've obviously conducted a pilot study where we've given our program to a, a small group of lawyers. So just a brief introduction on the European Court. It was established in 1959, and it makes judgments on whether a member state has breached the European Convention on Human Rights. Decisions are mostly based on previous cases, such as in case law, but there is no specific requirement for the court to uh, follow that in practice. So we've chosen admissibility specifically um, rather than the outcome of cases, as this is a major issue that the lawyers that we've spoken to have identified. So to kind of show you the scope of the issue, in 2019, there were 45,500 applications approximately submitted to the European Court, but only 90% of these, 90 percent of these were declared inadmissible only a small proportion of cases actually get to a point where a judgment needs to be made. And there's currently 50,000 cases in the European Court's backlog. So being able to speed up the ability to decide admissibility massively would massively improve uh, a person's access to justice in Europe. So our model has been implemented as a abstract dialectical framework or an ADF using the angelic methodology, which represents case law as a factor-based hierarchy. So you can represent this as a tree structure, and at the root node, you'll have a violation, and then you have some children, which are the issues, and then but the children of those issues would be the factors, which can be base level factors or abstract factors. And each node in this tree will have some acceptance conditions to say whether that abstract factor issue is accepted. So for the legal foundations of our model, we looked at admissibility. And to decide that, we need to know whether it's within the jurisdiction of the European Court. And the European Court has a set of formal rules that every application needs to meet. And these are things such as the application needs to be submitted within six months of the violation happening. It can't be a trivial uh, case. And by trivial, there are some exceptions. And it's the same with uh, anonymous applications. Normally, they don't accept them. But in some special cases, they may accept them. And there's a whole list of other rules as well. So here's uh, our example of an implemented model. So at our root, we have the node V1 that represents whether a violation of admissibility has occurred. And this is accepted when the two issues I1 and I2 are also accepted. And then issue one is accepted when the two base level factors and two abstract factors are accepted. Base level factors are represented as questions which reveal a fact. Abstract factors can have other abstract factors or base level factors as their children. So this was all implemented in a Java interface. And it asks each of the questions from before, uh, one after the other, until a decision can be made. Once the decision is made, it then gives, uh, it give, 
gives the answer out and it also gives the uh, explanation as to why it came to that uh, reasoning. And all questions are phrased as yes or no questions. So here's an example of what would happen at the end. So you get the, uh, so the decisions at the top and then the explanations in the text box underneath. So in this example, the application is not, won't be registered. And that's because the applicant doesn't have legal representation. The application form wasn't signed. So these would have been uh, base level factors, so questions that would have been given. And we can infer by through the issues that not all signatures have been provided and that the application doesn't comply. Now, obviously the ADAF is a lot bigger, but we only, um, we only when we generate our explanation, we only take uh, the parts that the user have answered and is actually relevant to the decision that's made. So we don't just show everything in one go. So when we finished making this, we sent it off to four lawyers who work within the European Court of Human Rights. And once they had a play with the program, they completed a survey to give, which had 11 multiple choice questions. And these questions, you could have a positive or negative result. So it's the strongly agree, agree, disagree, strongly disagree. And these covered uh, things such as functionality, usability, explainability. So whether the program functioned, uh, how usable the program was, how what they thought of the quality of the explanation, how useful they would find the program, and what they thought of the questions that we posed within our program. And so in our results, we had largely positive across the board, which was uh, very nice to see, even though there's uh, very few. And uh, to conclude, so obviously we had some very uh, positive results from the lawyers. And we can generally take away that lawyers do want technology um, to help them with the issues that they are facing. But they're also not computer ex experts, so we can't have anything that's too complicated uh, or difficult to set up. So our future um, developments have tended to lean towards web-based systems. Okay, thank you very much for listening. And I'm happy to take any questions. Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Colonet. It was a really good presentation, very lovely. And about the questions, when working with the experts, uh, which which you think were the main limitations to to cooperate with them to do the work? So we, when we created the questions. Uh, I first went through uh, the lawyer, the booklet that they give to the lawyers to explain how uh, admissibility works. And then I created the set of questions and then I spoke to them, to the lawyers about it. Um, it generally went well. The biggest difficulty was finding things that weren't explained to uh, in the documentation that was given. So there was often hidden things um, it's usually some exceptions to the questions that were given that needed to be added in. So it's usually trying to find little uh, finicky parts of uh, the law that as a lawyer, you don't really understand. Ah, okay, I, I get it. Uh, another question is, this work was modeled, think about a uh, case law uh, judicial system, right? Yeah. Or so uh, have you, okay. So yeah, it, it, it is um, case law uh, for the most part for the European court, but they're not bound to it. Um, so they will typically, in almost all cases, they'll refer to a previous case, but um, there have been some, it's usually when it's a, a massive change uh, in, uh, so whether, 
uh, I think it's things like with a homosexuality is allowed to be in a same-sex marriage. Things, things, big changes like that tends to be where it doesn't rely on case law. Mm, okay, mm, that's nice. And what what do you think about the future uh, of this work, which will, which will be a uh, uh, ultimate goal, let's say? Um, so what we've been working with is trying to find ways of the lawyers or users, so people who apply to the court can then use this program. But let's we'll try and simplify some of the questions and make it easy to use this so that instead of submitting this case and then it gets put into the backlog before someone generates it, they can then see how to make a good application, if you like, to the court and they will be able to understand it a little bit better. And the court then gets better quality applications.